G'day everyone, this is Ozzy Okdok, and thank you for visiting my channel, What's Okdok? I'm a doctor from Australia, and I specialize in the field known as occupational medicine. Hello everyone, today we'll be discussing one of the more complex hazards in the workplace, biological hazards. Given the wide breadth of this topic, I'll be only speaking generally and leave specific examples for later videos. So biological hazards are defined as organisms or organic matter produced by these organisms that are harmful to human health. Biological hazards can cause three broad health effects on the body, namely infection, allergy, and poisoning. For infections, this can be any organism that is capable of causing disease. Some examples include viruses, bacteria, and fungi. Animals can also transmit infections to humans, known as zoonosis, and this can be either direct or indirect. For transmission of infections, this can be direct, and this is where physical contact with the infected person or infective agent can lead to direct transmission. It can also result from the exposure to biological material, such as blood or body secretions. There can be indirect transmission through surface contact, so some infectious agents can survive on surfaces for an extended period of time. And some inanimate objects or materials can act as mechanisms for transfer, known as fomites. For example, these can be common objects such as door handles or kitchen countertops. They can also be foodborne or waterborne toxins. Infections can also be potentially contracted via contaminated food or water sources. This can be due to poor food handling, poor hygiene, or drinking contaminated water. Droplet and airborne contamination. Mucus secretions emitted from coughing or sneezing can create droplets or aerosol infections that have the potential to transmit over certain distances, for example, influenza. Droplets can come from the environment, such as soil or water, and cause infections. Environmental examples include the transmission of Legionella from aerosolized droplets from water-based cooling towels. Vector-borne disease. Vectors are organisms which can carry on them disease-causing microorganisms and allow their transfer from one host to another. Vectors are often very mobile, allowing the distance of potential disease transmission to be high. Susceptibility can depend on a number of factors, including geographical location, vector and host characteristics, as well as protective measures in place. Examples can include malaria carrying mosquitoes. For allergies, Animals and plants and their respective products can be potential allergy-causing agents. This can come either via direct inflammation of the skin, known as irritant contact dermatitis. Contact with particular agents can also lead to an allergic reaction, so that with subsequent contact, this can lead to development of a skin condition known as allergic contact dermatitis. The final way that biological hazards can cause health effects on the body is poisonings. Contact with certain plant species or plant materials can cause poisonings. Contact with certain animals, particularly being bitten by snakes or spiders, or direct skin contact with jellyfish can cause harmful effects. Occupational factors can also be important in determining the risk of coming into contact with biological hazards, namely the type of occupation, as well as the location and environment of the work. With types of occupations, some biological hazards are intrinsic to a specific occupation. Outdoor workers can be exposed to a wide range of biohazards. Those that work in close contact with animals or animal products, such as those in agriculture, forestry or fishing industries, are more at risk of zoonotic or vector-related diseases. Abattoir workers can also be at risk due to their close contact with animal products. Healthcare and laboratory workers are also at increased risk due to their exposure to human blood and bodily fluids. Working in roles which involve hand and liquid waste, rubbish collection and disposal can also be high risk. The location and environment can also be important. Vector-borne diseases can also be more prevalent depending on the geographical location, such as malaria which is endemic throughout most of the tropics. Socioeconomic factors, as well as certain cultural practices, can also lead to susceptibility to certain infections. For example, wet markets can lead to the increased risk of zoonotic infections, as well as food and water contamination. 
indoor workplaces can also be potential sources of biological hazards, particularly in enclosed spaces, areas with central air conditioning, or areas with public objects or spaces. In order to manage biological hazards, again we use the hierarchy of controls. The complexity of biological hazards in the workplace means that the development of controls need to be tailored to the worker, the specific occupation, and the workplace. With elimination, if possible, elimination of the hazards should be the highest priority. This could mean eliminating the source such as water reservoirs for Legionella, eliminating the agent or vector by the use of pesticides, or through the use of sterilization and disinfection techniques such as heat, pressure, and the use of chemicals. Engineering controls. Having specialized isolation facilities for those working in the laboratory setting. Having ventilation systems such as negative pressure and safety cabinets. Have specialized storage and transport of biological agents. Automating equipment. Having adequate waste disposal such as sharps containers and biological hazard bags. Administrative controls. Review of policies and procedures, particularly at those involving infection control. Immunization programs for the workers. Regular health monitoring of workers. Training on safe handling of biological materials. Having adequate labeling and warning signs as well as regular review and maintenance of ventilation and air conditioning. Finally, with PPE, having the adequate gloves, protective clothing, eye and face protection, and respiratory protection. In summary, biological hazards can have a number of health effects on the body, namely infection, allergy, and poisoning. Occupational factors can also be important in determining the risk of exposure, namely the type of work as well as the location and environment. Finally, it's important to tailor your controls to the specific biological hazard that a worker will be exposed to in their occupation. I'll be leaving a few references in the video description if you wish to explore this topic further. I will also go into more specific examples of biological hazards in subsequent videos. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that I provided you with some valuable information in the area of occupational medicine. I value any feedback, therefore please feel free to leave a comment on any of my videos, as well as a like if you enjoyed it. If you find my content of value, please subscribe and share them with your family and colleagues. Have a good day.